This is where we left off in the previous video. Our initial step involves removing the extruder motor along with all its associated cables as we're transitioning to a direct drive system for this upgrade. We also need to relocate the filament sensor since its current position won't be suitable. To do this, we'll simply loosen and remove two bolts and disconnect the related cables. Regarding the extruder motor, it's held in place by three screws. Two of these screws are easy to remove by unscrewing them conventionally. However, one screw is a bit more challenging since it requires a tool to hold the nut beneath it while removing the motor. We'll need to remove the PCB that houses all these cables, which we won't be needing either. This part can be detached with just two screws. The next step is particularly interesting. As I mentioned in the previous video, the stock board shares a single stepper driver for the Z-axis. To address this, we will remove the timing belt that synchronizes the movement of both Z-axis rods. This timing belt ensures that when one Z-axis moves, the other moves in sync. However, for our upgrade, we won't need this synchronization. To remove the timing belt, there are two screws at the back on each side that you'll need to unscrew. Once these screws are removed, you can detach the top part where the rod is secured by a wheel bearing. We'll repeat this process for both sides, allowing us to remove the timing belt completely. After the upgrade, this modification will enable us to move the Z-axis independently without any issues. When reassembling, be sure to secure the support with the wheel bearing tightly as it's essential for smooth operation. Next, I'll remove the cable connected to the X-axis stepper motor, and I'll also disconnect the cable from the hot end. These components won't be needed for our upcoming modifications. Additionally, we won't be utilizing an end stop for the Z-axis. To achieve this, I'll remove the lower part from the left Z-axis frame, located at the bottom. Following that, I'll also remove the corresponding upper part. Instead of relying on a traditional end stop, we'll be employing a probe, specifically a BL touch. The BL touch will serve to precisely determine the bed's position. In essence, we're removing any components that are no longer necessary. Now, I'll proceed to remove the top section of the printer, which includes both Z-axis components. The reason behind this is to ensure that I can work on a flat surface without encountering unnecessary difficulties. While this approach may seem like overkill, as one could potentially work with the printer positioned upright at 90 degrees, I prefer to maintain an optimal working position to avoid any potential issues. After removing the Z-section from the top part of the printer, 
My next step is to reposition the cables. As mentioned earlier, we'll essentially be rewiring the entire setup, so there's no need to retain the existing cables. While you could potentially salvage them and create new JST connections, it's worth noting that these printers use unique connectors that aren't commonly found in standard printers. Personally, I've chosen to replace the wires entirely, as they are quite thin, and I prefer to have more robust connections that I can trust. I'll be opening the electrical box which houses the main board, the bed MOSFET, and the connections for the power supply unit, PSU. When you open the box, be cautious not to pull it abruptly. Inside, you'll find a fan that's directly connected to the board. Pulling it to forcefully could damage the fan and potentially lead to issues or break a gee. I'll begin by disconnecting all the cables. To do this, simply pass each cable through the designated hole. Once this is done, we're almost ready to remove the board. This part of the process is relatively straightforward, primarily focused on disassembly. You'll need to cut a few zip ties to release some of the cables since they are connected to other cables that we won't be removing. I realized that I forgot to remove the cables from one of the axes, specifically the one passing through the hole to the other side. There were two clips that needed to be removed, but I managed to address this from the other side, effectively removing them with no issues. After all the cables are free, it's time to disconnect some of the cables from the board. It's worth noting that any cubic uses a somewhat stubborn glue. Instead of attempting to remove the glue, I found it more practical to leave the cables inside the board, as they won't be needed. I'm currently in the process of removing the board. It's held in place by four screws, and it's essential to keep these screws because we'll need them later. I've custom designed a mounting part using Fusion 360 to ensure a snug fit for the new board. Without this custom mount, the board can't be installed. Additionally, there's an extra screw to remove, which serves as a ground connection. We'll lose this connection, as we may not have a suitable ground point elsewhere. This printer has several ground connections, including one in the filament sensor.
After removing the board, the next step is to detach the bed thermistor. Be cautious when handling it, especially due to the stubborn red glue I mentioned earlier. Gently remove the thermistor, trying not to damage it. Even if it breaks, it's replaceable, but it's better to avoid any damage if possible. At this point, we've reached the end of this video. As I mentioned in the previous video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and join our Discord server to stay updated and connected with the community.